The following session was recorded live in San Antonio, Texas for the 2003 Caller Lab Conference. This is tape number four, After Party. This is Dan doing the taping. This is the after party session for the 2003 Caller Lab Convention. Our theme for this convention is winning ways. I've never seen so many people's names that are winning ways. We have a saying in Texas, and never squat with your spurs on. <laughs> Always drink upstream of the herd. need your help. <laughs> How many of you do after party type things at whatever, weekend, festival, whatever it might happen to be? Then why in God's name didn't you volunteer to be on this program? 90% <laughs> of you didn't volunteer. My friend is a rather old-fashioned lady, quite elegant and delicate, especially in her language. She and her husband were planning a week-long camping trip, so she rode a campground for reservations. She wanted to be sure it was fully equipped, but didn't quite know how to ask about toilet facilities. She didn't want to write toilet in her letter, after much deliberation, she thought of the old-fashioned term, bathroom commode. But when she wrote it down, she thought she was being too forward. So she started all over again, rewrote the entire letter, and referred to the bathroom commode as the BC. Does your campground have its own BC? she wrote. Well, the campground owner wasn't old-fashioned at all, and when he got this letter, he couldn't figure out what she was talking about. The B.C. business really had him stumped. After worrying about it for a while, she showed the letter to some of the campers, but no one could figure out what she was talking about. After giving it much thought, the owner decided that she must be asking about the location of the local Baptist church. <laughs> so he sat down and wrote the following reply. Dear Madam, I regret very much to delay in answering your letter, but I now take the pleasure of informing you that the B.C. is located six miles north of the campground. It is capable of seating 250 people at one time. I will admit that it is quite a distance away if you are in the habit of going regularly. No doubt you will be pleased to know that a great number of people take their lunches along and make a day of it. They usually arrive early and stay late. The last time my wife and I went was six months ago, and it was so crowded that we had to stand up the whole time. Right now, there is a supper plan to raise money for more seats. It will be held in the basement of the B.C. I would like to say that it pains me that I'm not able to go more regularly but it is not for lack of desire on my part. As we grow older, it seems to be more of an effort 
particularly in cold weather. If you do decide to come to our campground, perhaps I could go with you the first time that you go, sit with you and introduce you to all the other folks. Remember, this is a very friendly community. Use the microphone. This next scene takes place in a bar. Okay, all right, girlfriend. Well, I certainly hope that we find some cute guys to dance with tonight in this place. It would be different. Yes, it's somebody different. Well, life is too short to dance with ugly men, I'm telling you. I God, and there seems to be a lot of them here. Lordy, 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 look at his feet. My God. <laughs> Have you ever seen feet so big? No. Well, you know... Well, you know what the thing is about men's feet, that you no, can... No, what is the... Well, oh, I if a man has really big feet, he has a no. really big... No, no, don't say that. I'm going to find out. Why don't you, you go on, girlfriend, okay? I'll, I'll call Good you luck. tomorrow, honey. I'll Good call luck. you tomorrow. <laughs> Howdy. Oh, hello. Howdy, cowboy. What you doing? I'd like to get to know you. You want to hang out? Sure. Sounds may like I, a good uh, idea. May I join you? Well, yes, ma'am. Have a seat. Um, I have to tell you, I have never seen <laughs> boots or feet this big. Uh, well, what? <laughs> we grow things pretty big in Texas. What size boot is that? Fifteen and a half. <laughs> Ma'am. <clears throat> okay. Um, I, I have to, <laughs> I have to tell you, I've heard a rumor, and I don't know if it's true. Um, I have heard that... Uh, well, I can tell you right off, it ain't no rumor, ma'am. I think I have a pretty good idea of what you're talking about. Would you care to back that up? Yep. Let's go. All right. Okay, well, I'll be... Uh, how about that, baby? Uh, I'll be... Welcome to I'll Texas. call you. I'll call you. Oh, uh, yeah, i got to get going. Right. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll call you. Oh, and before I go, he, um, here. Wow, a hundred bucks. Ah, oh, dang, I ain't never been paid that much. Was it really that good? Honey, that hundred bucks wasn't for last night. It was to get yourself a pair of boots that fit...
You ought to be here. says it's going to be up on the 20th floor. I heard that it may be changed, so please keep in mind where it might be. That auction is to raise money for the foundation for the preservation and promotion of square dancing. If you're interested in the items that will be up for auction, they're in the exhibit room right between Palomino and Supreme uh, Audio booths on the right-hand wall. If you go in and have a look, and there's some things, really nice things, that are not there on either of the tables as yet. Uh, 
but they will be available for the auction. So please keep that in mind. And we intend to have a lot of fun at that auction, and we also hope that we will raise some money for the foundation. So we want everybody to have loose pocketbooks at that time. How about a nice welcome for Gloria Roth? Thank you. Thanks, John. This is called Did You Know? Uh, this is an excerpt from a book I've written and been writing since I first started calling over 50 years ago. And as I told John and Deborah at dinner, uh, I have to wait to publish it till a few people have died. All right, how many of you in the room have ever heard of or even knew Bill Kastner? Okay, uh, Bill is not with us anymore, uh, and yet we remember him for many things, if nothing more than his music stand that he always had in front of him, you know, when he would go calling around the country. He set that music stand up, and he used it every single tip he called. He read from this music stand, which we do not advise. But uh, he was known for that, and he also was known for his marvelous, marvelous um, exhibition group. Does anybody know the name of that group? Squarenators? Or I understand. I saw it only once, and it was breathtaking. However, what you did not know, or I maybe should say is, did you know, when Bill was traveling in New England, and I still lived in Massachusetts, he called me one day in the middle of the summer, when I was running a children's camp, actually it was a girls' camp. I didn't have any sons yet, so it wasn't a co-ed camp. It was just for small children, uh, you know, small girls. And uh, he was in Hartford, Connecticut, having called a dance down there, asked me if I would come and get him and could he stay at my house for a couple of nights. And I didn't know Bill very well, only that he called with a music stand, you know. And I said, well, Bill, I don't think it's real convenient right now because I have this children's camp and even my husband does not stay home during the summer. He goes away because the girls change clothes in the woods and, you know, just no men are allowed on the premises. And he said, hey, I'll stay in the house. I'll just stay in the house. So I drove down to Hartford and picked him up. He came through the revolving door. Now, if you don't know Bill Kastner, Bill, I don't know how much he weighed, but he had, was it 150 silver dollars in a belt around him. Now, you know if you put a hundred silver dollars around you. That's a big man. Where's Tommy Miller? <laughs> oh, sorry, Tom. I, Tom's in a board meeting. Okay. Anyway, he, he was a little bigger than Tommy. I mean, a real big man. Anyway, he came through the revolving door and he had this huge bunch of yellow roses. I mean, long step. And I thought, this man has the wrong idea about me. And, you know, and he, he got stuck in the revolving door in the, the, uh, the bellhop that was there. He's pushing from one side, and Bill is struggling. He's trying to work these roses out through the door, you know. And, and when he came to the car, before he got in, the, the bellman or the captain, he opened the door. And I said to Bill, I leaned down, and I said, Bill, I hope those roses aren't for me. And he was so frustrated. He turned and he said to the bellhop, take these GD flowers and get rid of them. So that started our time, and I thought, this man's going to give me some trouble. I'm pretty sure this man is, is trouble. We got back to the house, and of course, I had a staff of about 17 female counselors. And one of the things we did in the evening when the children went home uh, after camping was to go out and practice on our new Nissan trampoline and uh, learn some new things so that my counselors could teach them to the young children. And Bill said to me, what are you going to do now? And I said, well, we have a counselor's meeting set up out in the, the dance hall, in the pavilion, we called it. And he said, uh, well, what are you going to do up there? I said, we're going to just do a little bit of trampoline. And he said, well, couldn't I come out to that? And I thought, oh, boy, he's certainly not going to come out to any of my lovely, attractive young lady counselors. I said, okay, you can come out to that. And Bill stood there, and as you know, if you know anything about trampolines, you have to spot. You have to have people around the edge, and usually we would have two on each, uh, the ends and the sides. But Bill, he took up one whole side. He just, you know, <laughs> and, and the, my counselors were really a little wary, and one girl was trying to learn a baroni, which is a very difficult stunt on the trampoline, and I was trying to stand back and give her a little bit of uh, help on what to do, and Bill said, uh, Gloria, could I say something? I said, sure, go ahead. And he said, this, this, and this, and this. 
And that girl got up and she did the trampoline. I said, Bill, how do you know that? And Bill said, let me show you. And so she got off the trampoline and I thought, there goes the bed of my trampoline. And he got up on the trampoline and people, I want you to know that you probably didn't know, Bill is so graceful or was so graceful on that trampoline, it took our breaths away. He had been teaching this as part of his uh, college uh, curriculum and it was amazing uh, for the rest of us you know when the trampoline decreases or bend you know sinks in uh, it whooshes the air out and by the time he was finished all of us were freezing because it would go oh and he would go up in the air and then it would come down oh anyway i thought you'd like to know that about bill kastner all right now these two callers are going to go together uh, Dick Jones, who was one of my favorite, was one of my favorite people and closest friend, and Red Bates, who is still alive, and I'm glad he's not here. Now, <laughs> both Red and Dick Jones um, went to Springfield College. I don't know if you knew this, and their professor, one of their professors, uh, Springfield College is predominantly, by the way, a physical education college, and one of their professors was a man by the name of Vern Cox. Earl Johnson and, uh, told me once, if Vern had decided to stop being a professor at the college and go into square dance calling full time, he would have put everybody else out of business. He was really good, but he wasn't interested in that. And uh, so both Red and Dick started at Springfield College. Now, those of you, how many of you do know Red Bates? All right. You know that Red is a man of few words. In fact, you might even say he's a man of no words. And when he started dating his first wife, that's one reason I'm glad, you know, that he isn't here. Uh, but uh, when he started dating his first wife, Shirley told me that he, you know, they would, he would, she would never know where they were going, and he would not tell her. And her mother would say to her, "What on earth are you going out with that man for?" Shirley was a bubbly, talkative kind of person, and. Shirley couldn't really explain, so one night when the Eastern States exhibition was on, they had a rodeo or rodeo, how do you say it in Texas? Rodeo. rodeo. And he had box seats right on the surface, right next to the chutes. And uh, she's sitting there, he said he had to leave for a few minutes, and, and he got up and left, and she thought he was going to go to the John or get some food or something. And she's sitting there eating her popcorn, and all of a sudden, over the loudspeaker, said, and out of shoot, number so-and-so comes, Red Bates. And she about fell off her seat. And Red Bates came out of the chute and held on, had to go back another night. But I'm sure you didn't know that he was a rodeo person. Anyway, uh, rodeo, pardon me. Now, as in relation to Dick Jones, they both had a very good background at Springfield College, and that's why they both became very successful. Red, to this day, still draws a tremendous car, you know, crowd when he's in New England calling and coming up from Massachusetts through. Now, uh, Dick Jones, um, when I went to Springfield College myself, uh, I was in an aquatic program, and the instructors stood around the edge of the pool and there was this gentleman there that was one of the instructors standing around the pool and they made you swim for several hours to make sure you had the stamina to pass this rigorous test that they were giving us and uh, uh, if you stopped and hung on to the, the uh, uh, gutter of the pool these instructors were to step on your fingers and make you keep going and I was constantly being stepped on because you know, I mean I couldn't keep going and I would look up and invariably, it was this man with this black hair, and he looked down at me very disdainfully, as much as say, get your moving. And uh, about, I would say, maybe three years after that, I started hearing about a square dance caller in, uh, on Long Island and in New York. And people said to me, you know, he's really good, Gloria. You know, he's really good. And we were at a convention in Toronto. Our first convention was called the Atlantic Convention up in Toronto. And uh, we went from Massachusetts up there. And, you know, when you go to your first convention, it's all very different to you. It's all very different. You don't know how quite to dress and whatever. And we had gone into the snack bar in the hotel lobby, and uh, there was a lineup waiting to get in. And I looked and saw a man standing in the doorway, and I said to my husband, does that man look familiar to He looks familiar to me. And he came in and sat, happened to get the empty chair with his wife next to me. And... Uh, to make a long story short, I couldn't 
leave that counter without saying to him, do I look familiar to you? And he said, yes, you do, and you know, I can't figure out where I ever saw you before, and we couldn't figure it out. Nothing was said about square dancing. You know, nothing at all was said about square dancing. And so about six months after that, I received a letter from Long Island asking me to come and call at Dick Jones's club, signed by Dick Jones. And I thought, oh, now I'll get to meet this caller that's coming along so good, you know. And when I found my way to the square dance hall and walked in, there was a man with a broom sweeping the floor off. And he turned around and his mouth dropped and he said, are you Gloria Rios? And I said, are you Dick Jones? And so then we had to start and figure out where had we actually met. And he was the instructor at Springfield College that used to step on my fingers. <laughs> so I'm sure those of you who knew Dick did not realize that he was an aquatic specialist. They even taught their poodle how to dive, and that's the truth. Now, the next two are together, are Curly Custer and Johnny Davis. How many of you knew Johnny Davis from Merlanger, Kentucky? All right. When Johnny used to come, I don't think any of you knew that he was an expert on the banjo and really introduced my family. My son now makes his living playing a stringed instrument, and it's all due to Johnny Davis, and I don't think many of you knew it. How many of you knew Curly Custer or know Curly Custer? Fewer of you. Cur Curly Custer's from Hagerstown, Maryland, and Curly Custer, as a boy, won the U.S. Youth Fiddle Championship. And all the years that he was calling and traveling around, I don't think people realized that he was a fiddle champion. Okay, Bruce Johnson. How many of you know Bruce Johnson? He's one of our founders and forefathers and everything in square dancing. Okay, I don't know how many of you know that he was a child protege on the piano from Russia. Russia, uh, Russia, you know, Russia, R-U-S-S-I-A. And uh, the reason, the way we found out was at a convention, he got up on the stage while the different callers were calling, and he would accompany them live on the piano. He was just, just terrific. So I think that's an interesting fact about Bruce. Okay, now for Al Brundage and Vaughn Parrish. All of you must know Al Brundage, right? How many know Al Brundage? Okay, how many of you know Vaughn Parrish, or know of, I don't necessarily mean know them personally. Okay, so these are two fellows that you know very well. Um, when Al and his first wife, <laughs> uh, Mary, were staying at my house, their little daughter, Mary Lou, came to my children's camp, and my first recording was Mary Lou, and dedicated to Mary Lou Brundage, who of course now is in her 40s, oh my soul. Anyway, um, I had just had my daughter Gwen so that it would have been in the winter of 1958 and my bedroom was on the first floor, the guest rooms were on the second floor and so was the nursery. And I, I was very aware that I didn't want my little baby waking up, you know, screaming and crying and waking up Al and his wife. And so uh, I heard her wake up and start to cry and I started up the stairs and all of a sudden these arms stuck out with a baby in them saying, don't take another step, I haven't got a stitch on. <laughs> so I'm sure you did not know that Al was a babysitter. Now Vaughn, Vaughn Parrish has a, a, a hand the size of what? A ham hock. That's a good description, Deborah. Very good. Um, and Vaughn was there when my son, who was born in 1964, was just an infant, and he could palm him in one hand. And of course, he had sons too, as you know. And Vaughn, uh, so those two guys were really family people, and I'm sure some of you didn't know that because we so, sort of think of Now, the last one I want to speak about is Les Gocher. And how many of you knew Les or knew of Les Gocher? Okay. There are many stories about Les, and Les and his first wife, Winnie, who passed away, um, and he's gone now too. But Winnie uh, was a particular kind of a person, and very often they would be very late coming to my place to call at my hall, and, and I would always be in, I didn't want to get up there and start a dance because Les had to have his own whole evening, you know. I didn't want to start the dance, and yet you can't keep that many people standing around. And uh, so we got my machine set up, ready to go, thinking it would save a little bit of time. And uh, are you coming up here? No, okay. <laughs> and uh, uh, Les 
arrived late, and I said to him, he started to get his equipment out of the car. He said, here, Gloria, you carry my records. And he handed me three records. I kid you not. They weren't in a record case. He handed me three records, and, he, and I said, Les, where's your case? He said, no, I only use three records. I do one singing call, the first tip, and after that they asked me not to do any, and I just use two patter records. <laughs> that is the truth. That is the truth. One time in one of his lo Black Mountain label long play records, there was a band that didn't have any music on it, and I asked him when I saw him, you know, I said, hey, Les, how come that band doesn't have any music on it? He said, hell, people don't listen to the music, you know. Anyway, that's all I have to say now. You can buy my book. The name of the book is, when it's printed after I'm dead and gone and you people may still be around, is Unbroken Bubbles, okay? Unbroken Bubbles. Nice hand for Gloria. Thank you very much, Gloria. See you all later. Oh. Uh -huh.
Gip had to, we had to change the program for just a bit because the Board of Covenants is calling Skip Brown on the carpet and he had to go to the room down there with the board's meeting. And <laughs> some of the board members saw him running around in that costume he got on, so they got him down there. I think the ethics committee is after him here. <laughs> now he had to, he had a quick meeting with the board, so he had to go. We changed, switched the program just a tad. Come on. <laughs> what a nice hand for Francis Zeller. You know, uh, I hadn't seen anything like that since Cal Golden quit traveling. <laughs> of course, Skip's got a lot better voice. Yeah, I was uh, I was going to do my favorite tonight, but when I called John and volunteered, he said. You ain't going to do old bones again. So we're not going to do old bones. I'm going to do a little I'm going to do a little number here for all you ladies. Yeah. You can you can close your eyes and just think back in the days of yore. little number entitled, I Really Don't Want to Know. How many arms have held you and hated to let you go? Think of that, Gloria. How many, how many, I wonder, but I really don't want to know. How many lips have kissed you and said,
There are two theories to arguing with a woman. Neither one works. Don't worry about biting off more than you can chew. Your mouth is probably a whole lot bigger than you think. If you get to thinking you're a person of some influence, try ordering somebody else's dog around. Number seven. <laughs>
Patty Green, would you come up here, please? Where, where is she? In the back. Patty. Hiding in a hole. Patty, come up here. Who else? How about Dave Clay? Dave Clay, come here. Come up on the stage, please. What are you, what are you doing with Deborah's purse? Huh? She gave it to you. Boy, she better not. Much as I paid for that darn thing, she better not be giving it away. Okay. This, and those of you on the tape, you don't have, you're not going to have any idea what's going on. But we will tell you just a little bit. Hmm? No, they have no idea. No, you don't. Totally unrehearsed. Now, what we're going to do, Deborah and I... Where are y'all going? Hey, 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 hey. Where in the heck y'all? Boy, I tell you what, you don't be my daughter-in-law anymore if you don't tell me. Could be. <laughs> no, never mind, nothing. I didn't say a word, darling. I love you. <laughs> she said, kiss my glass. <laughs> oh, I was going to say a while ago, I was in Chengdu, China. And the, there was a disco in there, and one, uh, the, they couldn't speak English, but they were singing really well. And the lady said, here is a Whitney Houston song, and she sang the one that Andrea just did, I Will Always Love You. And I said, boy, she don't know what's going on. Yeah. Whose song was that? Dolly, Dolly Parton wrote yeah. and sang, I Will Always Love You. Okay. Anyway, okay. what we're going to do now, Deborah and I are mannequins. We cannot move on our own, but we can talk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, uh, Patty, come over here with me. Oh. Dave, you're with Deborah. <laughs> and we, we do not know how to do anything. You have to move every part of our body that you want moved, even our legs. If you want our legs to go forward, then you push on the back. Mm -hmm. If you Just want it to go back. backward, you push on the front. If you want our arms to go in a certain direction or do something, you have to move everything. We cannot move anything by ourselves, but we can talk, okay? And we do not know how to do any of the square dance movements, but you're going to show us how to do a do -sa -da. All right? Ready? Go. You have to... It would be really cool... Yeah, it, we're supposed to do it with each other, so like a really good thing would be kind of facing that person would be... A, Okay, all right. Got to tap it, tap it, no, ta tap it for it. There you go. Careful where you're tapping, Dave. <laughs> God, he acts like he's scared to death to touch her. <laughs> Pushing on me, man. Yeah, he's pushing me on me. God, I feel like I'm spreading out. <laughs> are we done? What in the world are they doing to us? Does this continue? <laughs> How about a nice hand for Dave and Betty? Ainsworth and um, Moan Lottie. Moon. Moon. Mare. Mare. Yeah. This Mare. Way. Mare. Um, and you choose some. Choose it. Choose. I chose your girl. Choose my guy. <laughs> Ain't none in here. <laughs> Paul Hensley, come here. Now, now, what what we also we you know we really should have one more person to kind of define because they put us through the move, but they didn't really give the definition of the call, did they? 
We, we all know because we all, you all know what square dancing is. But I think we need somebody to give the definition. Melton the knows all about definition. Okay, Melton, Melton would you Melton, come up and join us for just a minute? Mayor Melton, now. <laughs> <laughs> all right, now. Right now. Right, right now. Okay, so Melton can. Yeah, we got to describe. <laughs> huh? Spin okay. chain and exchange and reverse the gears and flush the tank. Now, what Melton is going to to describe. define or describe is you saw how comfortably and smoothly we went through the dosa do, and now Melton, with the help, of course, of the mannequin movers, is going to put us through the square dance move swing. What I really wanted to do was the boot skit because I wouldn't have had to put on 15 and a half size boots. I already got that size. <laughs> Liar. You want me to start defining? Yeah, yeah. You're serious. You I'd rather have the pushing part. No. <laughs> Shucks. You have to describe. John, I know why you gave me this job. You wouldn't let me have the pushing part. You have to describe <laughs> a swing to them, and they have to. Anybody got one of little basic handbooks? <laughs> <laughs> two people that are facing each other, a boy and a girl preferably, turn the two people to face each other. The boy should extend his left arm with his palm up in a comfortable position, not an extended or uncomfortable position. <laughs> the girl should pace her left hand, her right hand, <laughs> in his left hand, palm down. You should move the dancers a little bit closer together. I like this part. <laughs> Wish my head was down there. Both the bottom and the top. <laughs> each dancer, each dancer should step slightly to his or her left, so that the boy's feet are outside of the line in which the girl's feet are on. To the left. Honey, the other left. <laughs> Honey, the other left. Left. Thank you. That's it. Now move his right foot so that his foot is outside of her foot. Perfect. Let the gentleman extend his right arm around the lady's waist and open the hand below the shoulder blade. Below the shoulder blade slightly below the shoulder blade. The lady should put her left arm on the boy's right shoulder with her thumb on the inside of his shoulder and the fingers either on the top or slightly over the top of the shoulder. That's it. Now both dancers should stand nice and tall and maintain their own balance and their own weight. Do not lean on or lean away from each other. The girl should use her left hand to push herself away from the boy as far as she feels comfortable or pull him as close together as she feels comfortable. And got it? And then both dancers should move their feet forward taking larger steps or longer steps on the outside foot and smaller steps on the inside foot until they have completed one revolution.
And at the completion of the swing, if the call is followed by a promenade, the girl should take her right foot, step back down the line of dance, as she pivots on her left foot and as the gent gently raises her left arm, the gent raises his left arm, his left arm, and with a slight pushing action on her right shoulder, starts twirling down the line as the girl takes four steps as the boy walks forward four steps with a hand held gently above her head, maintaining balance only. And the girl steps down the line of dance with her left foot, completing the twirl. At which time they are now again facing each other and they fall into a yellow rock clinch. You think this stuff is easy? <laughs> Square dancing hard work, I guarantee. <laughs> you have students that look just like that, Melton. <laughs> Don't we all? <laughs> this is Lottie Ainsworth. This is about focusing. <laughs> Focus. It's true. 
maybe next year. Lottie Ainsworth, Michelle Vieira, Dave Vieira, Kayla Jones. Thank you all very much. We hope you enjoyed the after party. How about a nice hand for all the participants in the after party? We thank them all very much, and thank you for coming. Have a good convention, all right? Thank you.